John, how are you doing, mate? You okay? Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I'm brilliant, mate. And I've got to say, darling, you know, it, it's it's great to see you as well. You know, because uh, I remember when I came down to your uh, seat at the table uh, that particular evening. You you doing your talks, and the thing I remember when Frankie, you and I were all together. Yes, when I look at because you had a brilliant photographer there, I, and because uh, I still use those pictures today. Yeah, so great. But, uh, but, uh, the, the, the way we're laughing, yeah. on, on, on that thing, it's brilliant, isn't it, mate? You know, it was. Yeah, it was I, a I great night. Once it, it was a really, it was really a good night. laugh. It was a brilliant night. I really enjoyed, it. and I still say that to Ronnie, um, to Ronnie, to, to Frankie now. I say that to him. when you look at those. I, I even smile now. Just yeah. thinking about that even, you know, because I don't think, I mean, given with COVID and we're all getting over that sort of element of, of, of everything, I don't think we quite always appreciate uh, the fact that we were so isolated and disconnected. And all of a sudden we were back in this situation where, where, where we were all together. And it, it, it was, Dal and I, I've got to say, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, you know. It was. It was a great night. Now, no, I don't think we did. I don't think we we appreciated that. You know, we're made for human connection, aren't we? And to be, for that to just be taken away from you um, against your will is, is insane, really. You know, we could we, you, we could delve into that for, for hours, couldn't we? The, the craziness of what happened yeah. there. But we're meant for human connection, aren't we? We're meant for connecting with with other people. That's uh, that's where we thrive. That's where we um, we grow. It's connection. I, I, absolutely, yeah, I, I definitely couldn't have said that any better. That connection does make you grow. It makes you grow in confidence in so many ways, doesn't it? You know, because I, and that's what's brilliant about what you're doing as dad and as well. When you're bringing people together and the sharing moments, there's that connect connectivity with one another. You know, it it is so valuable. And 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 in this world of uh, isolation and, and working from home. You know, and people are just stuck in their houses and that, you know. Joe, you know, one of the things and messages I constantly get from people is that type of message I'll get. Oh, I've seen you doing the beach boxing. I want to come along and do beach boxing. But uh, I, since COVID, I've lost all my confidence and I'm a little bit scared of of, of coming. You know, and I, I, I suppose especially people my age, do you know what I mean? It, it's uh, We're not all as young as you, you see, Darren. And... Uh, <laughs> It's just the reality, you know, but I, do you know what? As I look back, I'm like glad I've kept fit and I've kept my body moving, you know. I, I am so glad I, I, I've, I've done that. And I've got to say, there were times I felt like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, you know, and I, I could have done something else, you know. But I, I, I know you do this... Uh, this 90 day challenge or whatever, where you just, uh, you, you do this thing and yet you're constantly, and, and I get that completely because I know that's important. If you've not got that com commitment, if you've not got that discipline, if you're not going to be dead, if you don't do it, no one's gonna, no one else is going to do it for you. You have to do it. And uh, that's, 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 what, that's what's what's, important. Um, what does your what's your daily sort of routine look like, John? Because I, I think that would be really beneficial when you know you've been successful in many different arenas. What what what's your routine look like? What do you sort of do do each day that really keeps you firing on both cylinders? Do you think? Well, I, I, that's a great question. I, I, I've, I've got to say that, and and yeah, the, the first thing I do, I say this every morning, is this, is that I do wake up and I I do meditate, not very long, maybe for ten, ten minutes, but I do do it. I've got this sort of uh, these doors that open up into my bedroom, so the air comes in, and I just uh, I, I cross it cross leg it, and I do, and I meditate, you know, and then after I've done that. Um, I'm a great believer, no matter what you believe, I don't want to bring uh, religion into it. It doesn't matter what you believe, but I believe connecting with the divine is essential. And uh, whether that's the divine within you or uh, for whatever you believe in, it's making that connection. So I pray, and, and that's essentially what, what I'm saying, and pray for the people that are close to me. And um, that's important to me. And then I exercise. And I exercise for about... Uh, I, I do it till, you know, I, I, I keep squatting until I can't go anymore. I keep oh, doing press-ups till I can't do press-ups anymore, you know. Nice one. It's, it's, it's not a lot. I mean, it's 61 now, do you know what I mean? But I'm not saying it's a lot, you know, but most days I'll get over 30 and I'm still going. And, I'm, and I always say it's at the speed, but I, I'm exercising correctly. And then I, I'll I'll do um my, my trunk, you know, my, my major trunk, so, so some 
stomach exercises and things like that, you know, again until I fail. And and it just I, I if I'm training, I don't do that. My, my my biggest my biggest training night would be a Monday night. Now, okay. I mean, I'm 61 now, you know, but do you know what? I, I, I on a Monday night, I'll still do those exercises in the morning, and on a Monday night, I'm doing five threes. I go to Southport, so five, so it's five three minute rounds. And, and that what we got a 30 second rest, and you do that. I'm telling you, you get most fit people and try and do five threes on the bag, and you'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, because I, I I work on my flexibility and mobility, I can still kick. So I, I'm I'm um, the nearest to me in, in age wise is a guy called thirty, a guy of thirty five who's from Vietnam, and we nearly always end up training together, like you know. But I'm there with him all the way, and then I'm Amazing. on the pad, pads with him. Like so I, I'm made up, and I always say it. It's like the people I train with, and I never look forward to it. But I'm right. always so glad. I think, well, you know, I've started the week in the right way. But I know you do something similar. So what what is it that you do, Darren? Well, I'm a, I I look forty five minutes exercise every day. Um, my morning my morning sort of varies a, a little bit, John. Also, do the ten minutes meditation. I think that's extremely important. Me my, my four non negotiables at the moment is uh, uh, ten minutes meditation or and visualization. 45 minutes exercise, um, but a random act of kindness each day, just doing something something for somebody else, like give, give back in some way, shape or form. Um, and, and I'll listen to something or I'll learn from something. So if I'm reading or I'll listen, something that I can learn from. I think people, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head there. People think that people who exercise and go to the gym love exercise and go to the gym. Most days I do not want to go. Mo that's that's most days. I just force mm. myself into it because you know you know the good feeling that you're going to get at the end of it. That's the thing, and um, I, I think people are, like I think they, they need to feel motivated. Where it comes down to discipline, really, doesn't it? Not motivation. Uh, discipline. You, you know, you're absolutely right, and and I think there's a lot to be said. I mean, anyone who, who being in the gym, especially maybe training for a competition or a fight, will tell you like you know the, the real battles is in the training, not in the when you're stepping in, in into the ring. It, it's okay. in the training. That's when all your hard work done. So the ring is actually should be the easy bit. You know, maybe not right. mentally or psychologically because that's that's another battle. But you understand what I'm saying. You've already put yeah. the hard work, and you know it, it's there. You know. Right. And I, and the way I look at it now is uh, if I put that hard at work and now it means that I can have a quality of life that perhaps I otherwise would not enjoy. And um, I, 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 you know, I, I know I know you have a daughter. I mean, I, I've I've got a, a son, twenty four this year. I've got a daughter who's, who's twenty one early next year. And and I think it's about also uh, a great believer in, in being a positive role model. And I know that's also very important to you. You know, what, what you're trying to do is pass on those skill sets or the things that you've learned. And you say, well, look, here's a bit of a shortcut. Rather than you make the same mistakes as me, and my God, I've, I've made my own mistakes along the way. You know, and, uh, and you're trying to help them out, aren't you? You're trying to say, look, use my experience. Yeah. And, and, and do this definitely john i think you know one of the chapters in my, my second book was your children will watch what you do more than they listen to what you say and you can you can be telling them what what to do and i always use this sort of um the example of, of the guy who you know he's overweight and he says uh my son won't exercise and it's, it's like well have you looked in the mirror you know, are, are you are you are you exercising? If you want your son to exercise, exercise. You know, if you want kind That's children, be point. kind. If you want polite children, be polite. If you want want these things, you, you, your kids are watching that, and they're watching all the time, aren't they? That's the. That's a crazy thing, John. Even when yeah, we don't yeah. want some to the watching. Yeah. Well, that's very true, Dad. I don't think you've hit the nail on the head. I think I think yeah, you know, you're so right there, and you, you've expressed it so clearly. I think you're spot on with that. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's important, and um, I think you know the reason the reason I sort of wrote that first book, aside from the fact that that's that's what I always wanted to do, is I want I needed to be congruent that when I'm telling Ellie chase after her dreams, she sees that I'm also chasing after my own. Uh, you know how how can wow. I tell her so you can yes. achieve anything? You can go after what you want 
if I'm working in a job that I hate doing and, you know, I'm getting up every day and going to something that, that, I, that I don't want to do. Um, you, you, you can't, you can't, you can't tell somebody to do something or advise somebody that you're not, you're not doing yourself. Yeah. You know, you've said that so well, Dan, and I, and I think you've, you've really, you hit the nail on the head. That's absolutely right. Lead by example is what you're saying, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, and, definitely, and that's why definitely. Yeah, yeah. You know, talking about, um, so I saw a video today and it was, um, it, it was Park Lane in London. You could see Park Lane in the background and it was a, a green opposite Park Lane and it was full of tents. It Joe, was full I've of seen tents. The and some... Seen the same one. Oh, my, yeah. Heartbreaking, John. And there's like five guys who stood mm. looking like they're around a the fire or they're around something chatting mm. away. What, what do you think of the life paths that, you know, predominantly this is guys who are going to see this. What do you think of the life paths that are set out for m most men? Um, like where, where, where do you think we're going wrong? I, you know, my view on it is that we've got this life path that's set out by the government or whoever it is. Um, and it, it doesn't work. You know, this, Work hard, retire, and then you can enjoy that retirement and do nothing um, for the for the for the rest of your days. It's a you know it's completely a missold dream in, in my eyes. Most people don't make it that far. Um, they, they they don't get to enjoy that time, and the life in my eyes is on hold to supposedly live this dream at the end of your life when. Your health's deteriorating. You're not as fit as you used to be, and you're not. Um, you probably haven't got as much money if, if you've listened to what what the government have told you. What you know? What do you think with that? Where do you think we're going wrong in the fact I, that I, I, I don't think we are so much going wrong. I think we're misdirected by the government and the people in authority. Um, I don't know what you think about this, I, and I suppose what do I mean like that? I, I do not believe that uh, the system is put in such a way to help you succeed. I think the system's put there purposely that you feel like you are aiming to get somewhere. And when you feel like you're near there, there's another obstacle or they've moved the goalpost. And, and, I mean, the, 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 the simple one is, do you think there's, uh, there's two uh, examples I'll give with this now. I've got a friend who's 71 and he's Bob. He's 10 years older than me. I won't run next to Bob because when he runs next to me, he's away. <laughs> next to Bob. Like, so it's just not worth it. Like, you know, and, and, and uh, he'll, he'll make me look as if I'm not even trying, you know. And for the first time in it, you know, this guy's worked all his life and he hasn't had the most, uh, the, the, when I say that, He's had a hard, uh, he's worked in a, making cardboard factories for a bin manufacturer, you know, uh, car, making these cardboard boxes, all different sizes, and you're carrying big loads of cardboard, you're stacking, you're, you're pushing it through. It's not been easy work. He's done that for 45 years. Exactly. Think about that, 45 years. And at the time, he because he's recently had a bit of a problem over the last 12 months with one of his legs, and uh, <clears throat> he's still not had an appointment with the doctor. So there's a man who's given to the system completely, but the system's not given back to him. So that's one example I'm going to give. And and the other one is this. I, I, I mean, obviously, when, when I was younger, people retired at 65, you know. I'm a few years off that now, but mine has been moved further into the future at 67. And, and, and so there's the, an example of the, the government coming along and saying, oh, we're going to give you this, but then they move the goalpost. And now, apparently, although nothing's being said and it's not being clarified, there's a chance that it may be means tested as regards to whether you're entitled to it or, or not. Now, for somebody like me, I'm looking at that like, and I was thinking, oh, I'll be getting X, Y, Z. You know, it might not be great because I don't think we have a great pension. The DWP pension in this country has never been great. And I don't think it matters who's in. So I'm not being, I'm not making a political party point. For me, the 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 you know the both uh, the both the same. There's no difference. You know, they're not there to help us. They make life awkward. So I, I suppose just the point I'm saying is, given a couple of examples of the way they move the Gold Coast, thinking that you're going to attend attain something. And, and what I find particularly scary about this is this that, of course. When you do get old, you get to the point of maybe people, you know, 
I love a lot of people now that are on those scooters or, or maybe can't walk. They lose energy. Uh, they haven't got the quality of the life, so they haven't got the ability to fight or to protest or anything. It's gone for them. So there's right. nothing that they can do. And I think when you look at that, I, I think all that, you know, is that's scary. And one of the things that made me realise is this, is that I didn't want to rely on them. Right. Yeah. yeah Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. You know, and, and I've really, I've only learned that in my sort of late 30s. And I wish I'd, you know, I don't regret anything, but I wish I'd sort of tapped into that earlier. Um, me, you know, my stepdad, he sadly just passed away and he, he's done everything Obviously, that was yeah, sort yeah. of expected of him mm. from from the system. He's worked hard all his life. He was a long mm. distance driver. He's done overtime. Um, and he's very, if he did, he, he very rarely took a day off. He was never off sick, even if he'd had a bit of a sniffle like now. Some people ring in, he'd go in work. And he got to retirement and he, he did about five, six months of retirement. That was it. And if he wasn't ill, he wouldn't have retired anyway, John. He would have carried on working. But I just, you know, there's a there's a lot of realisations and a lot of lessons, I think, that come from, from losing somebody. And one of them is that um, this this whole um, sort of system that they, they sell you, this, it, it's, it's fake, it's false. And I think the... The, you know, it's a bit cynical, but the hope that most people don't live past that because then mm -hmm. they haven't got to pay any money out. And um, it, it, it's, yeah, it's not, it's to be not reliant on them, I think, at all. Um, I think Dana White hit the nail on the head where he said, you want the government to have the least, um, the least amount of interest or anything in your life as possible. You don't want to rely on them for, for anything. Um, but, you know, for, for people that maybe are still kind of like caught in that, what, what advice would you give them to, to break away from that, John, to not live in that sort of system, so to speak? That's a great question, Darren. <laughs> and I'll try and answer this as quickly as I can do. And that, you know, I heard a uh, sort of comedian, I can't think of what he said, and he said, but there's nothing that you can buy today that in 10 years' time you will look upon and say, isn't that fantastic? And then so when you when you realize that, you know, you might be working hard to buy a car or to do this and to do that, you know. And then it's sort of you lose you lose whatever value or joy that you had in that particular thing, and then you lose it after a while. You know, it doesn't. It's just another thing, you know. I I I, I, I want to uh, refer to. I, I was asked to give uh, a talk to the select business group uh, on April the tenth in uh, Warrington. And I got told that uh, to give you an idea of the quality in the room, one person in the room just sold one of his businesses for 250 million, right? Wow. And I got, yeah, uh, exactly. This was, you know, this is wow, this is big, big stuff. And uh, there was a lovely, uh, actually, uh, lovely lady, uh, and uh, she just won a co contract with the Chinese government and she detects right. holes in pipes. She already has a fantastic turnover, but apparently over the next few years, because she de she detects leaks in uh, nuclear power uh, stations, wow. yeah, her turnover will double for the next few years without a doubt. It, it was absolutely incredible. But what I told, they're going to take no prisoners. This lot, they, they they're going to take no prisoners. So if they don't like what you've got to say. They're going to tell you. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he gave me, and he said, all he said to me is this, we want you to talk about what is it all about? What is it? And, and that was it. And I kept thinking about this. And what I decided to do was this. I want to tell you really fast. I drew this, this clock with 60 minutes on it. And I said, I want you to imagine the first 20 minutes is naught to 25. And then the next 20 minutes on this clock is 26 to 50. And the next is 51 to wherever we go. I said, I want you to imagine that. I said, and the first thing, in my opinion, the three essential elements that make a successful life are uh, uh, the uh, your mental, physical, and spiritual. I said, these are three essential elements. And I said, what I want to do is look at which element of your life was the stronger in those periods of time, you know. And and one uh, quickly, what I tell you, I mean, most people turn around, they, they grow in the first twenty five years. I I know you go to college and university, but what you've got at that stage is knowledge. Because how many times have you heard that so and so's got a job, but he can't do it? 
because he hasn't yeah. got the experience. So you, you're talking about knowledge. Somebody that uh, um, somebody has knowledge, but they don't have knowing, and the knowing doesn't come until the twenty six to fifty. And and that so there's more mental in that because they really learned how to do the job. And instead of you trying to push down oh. doors, all of a sudden these people are knocking on your doors because they value your experience and they're coming at you. And they're coming at you. So yeah, in the first tw 25 years, a lot of physicality because our bodies change from a, 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 a toddler to a kid to a teenager to an adult. Like, you know, you do a lot of physical sports. And then as you get this career, you sort of slow that down. So we have this mental, we have this physical and then mental bit. And then this last thing, we've got to start thinking about the divine, which I'll start coming on to in a minute just before I get there. But one of the points I was saying, at the age of 44, when you've got people knocking on your doors and they're paying you more this money because they need your experience, all of a sudden they need you. Suddenly you're thinking, I've got this money. I seem to be living the highlight, but there's something missing. There's something missing in my life and I, I can't, I'm not quite sure what it is. Now what normally happens is this, someone either listens to it or they deny it. Now, what that is, in my opinion, and this is only, only an expressing opinion here, this is the divine knocking on your soul, reminding you I'm here. And it's saying to you, you can either listen to me, but your life is worth more than what you're giving it. And this is not a, a fulfilled life. It's a major part of what you needed to do. You had to go through these experiences, but you're now ready to move on. And you've got to find what is going to fulfill you. And I said, and those... When you can ask those questions, and you can then, uh, you you can then, uh, you you're on a journey, and you're not meant. We're not meant to automatically. This is what my life is has meaning. You're meant to go on this journey and find. It's a bit like the the alchemist the book, and he goes yeah. all around the world, and then he finds it right underneath his feet. It's that type of thing, but it's being prepared to look, and and, and, that, and, and that's the thing having the the ability or being willing to take the time. So the point I was making with it, within this speech is that uh, at 44, because I know that happened to me around 44, and a lot of somebody said, oh, it happened to me at 46, and all of a sudden I got these people feeding back to me. And, and suddenly, and then they were coming to me, oh, I, I realise now I've got this sense of direction of what I need to do, because they... Wow. they Fulfilling the physical, physical and mental, and the divine. So what I'm saying to you is this: I would completely ignore socially with the socialization. What are things I need to do? And 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 I, I think I've really coined up something there. I think that means more to me. And and then it, and and putting it within that diagram was able. People were able then to look at it and say, actually, that this speaks to me in a way that uh, I hadn't been spoken to before. Yeah, I love that. Do you, do you think, well, here's the, the, you know, the question on that. Do you think that, you know, that divine, that inner voice, do you think it's been speaking all along, but most of the time it's just been like, I ain't fucking listening to that? Because uh, I, I do, you know, I look back and I think you were told that then, but you didn't fucking listen. Um, and it's funny you, you should mention The Alchemist, John. So I, I read that when I was 15. Uh, I, I, may, I Maybe I was 16. And I'd heard all these good things about it. I'd read all the reviews and I read it and I thought, this is shit. Um, this is, uh, th this book that's recommended to me, this is shite. It's about a shepherd. What? And I didn't get it. It didn't, it didn't drop anything. I read it when I was about 36 and it was like bombs going off in me, in my brain. It was like everything was registering that probably should have registered at 16. But I wasn't ready to receive it. I wasn't ready to receive that information at the time. And so I didn't get it. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and you know, I couldn't explain that to my son now because he'd look at me and say, you know, Dad, you're a bit warped. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's, 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 there's something not quite right. You know, you're a whole six books missing from a complete shelf, like, you know, because he's not ready for it. He's not had the early experiences. But once he has knowing and people are knocking down his doors, He's going to realise he's been through these phases and he's going to ask himself, what is this thing? I mean, like, I know you've been on a journey yourself and that you're obviously asking yourself and you, instead of ignoring it, you're sorting your shit out, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? You're getting there. Yeah. And I'm sorting mine out as well. Yeah. It never stops because at the point at which we arrive, 
we've gone. Yeah. yeah do, you, do, do you know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's yeah. about embracing the journey. In, in my opinion, that's exactly what yeah. it's about. Yeah, definitely. It is. And, um, uh, you know, and, and listening, listening, listening to that voice, it's like I, I, what I wrote in Dreams to Goals that like that that voice that I kind of put as um, as, you, as your dreams, really, to to sort of to simplify it in the book, that I don't think it will ever go away until you do realise it, until you do bring it into fruition. I think, it'll, you know, sometimes that voice is quite low, sometimes it's loud. But I don't think it'll go until you, you you bring it to life. It'll always be whispering away. And if you want that um, loud and clear on your deathbed or while, when you're in that nursing home, that, that then that voice will become really loud. That um, you know, as as Les Brown put it, we we came to you, we came to you, and you didn't listen. And now we're going to die with you. And 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 that regret, I think, was so powerful that um, if if you don't listen to these things, then that's what you. That's what you're going to be up against, I think, later, oh, you, later you, on down I, the line. I don't think you realise how powerful what you said it is. <laughs> because um, I, I want to... If, if, if I was ever a coward over anything, I, I, I remember I had a much loved aunt and uh, she knew she was dying. And she said to me, you know, uh, I was dying. I didn't really want to face the question. I knew she was, but I didn't want to have the conversation. And who wants to start having this conversation with somebody that they love, respect and saying, yeah, you, you're going to pass. It's, it's gone. It's over for you. And all of a sudden, she started telling me about this regret she had because she, she could have married many a time. She'd been a good, a good looking woman in the past, but she never. And she said to me, I am so sorry. She said, I, I made up, John, you're my nephew and you're here. But I wish my own son and my own daughter was here. So evidently, that was a regret she was taking with her to the grave. And and what I my when I look back and look upon that. I, I regret for her that she realised this, that a voice was speaking to her and she ignored the voice. And secondly, I regret that I, I was too much of a coward to to have the conversation, to sit down and have the conversation with her and, and, and talk it through. I, I, wish, I, I suppose I'm older now, this is back in 2012, right, you know, so I, I would have been in my late 40s, you know. Uh, um, I, I, I wish I'd had... I wish I'd had the conversation with her. I wish I'd sat down and, and really got... I knew she wanted to have the conversation, yeah. but I, I found it too painful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so painful. Yeah, yeah. so painful. Uh, yeah, and, and and that's a pain that's, you know, never never going to go go away, is it? It's, it you've taken it to... She's taken it to a deathbed, like, which is... Correct. Which is awful. And, yeah. you know, you don't you don't have to. That's it. That's mm. a crazy thing. You don't. You don't. You don't have to do. You don't have to take these things with you. Just try. You know, if it's whispering to you, just try it. Just go. Go after it. Just see what. See what happens. See if it works. It might fuck up, but it might not. You don't no. No. You're absolutely right. But that's being brave enough and making those decisions. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that was the whole point of my book, Find Your Flow, which is that people repeat yeah. patterns. Although things have happened to them, they repeat patterns, routines, and habits. What it is, they create a pattern. You know, you remember that. Step one, I must do this. Step two, I must do that. So the pattern's created. And then to reinforce it, you, you create a habit because you keep going through the pattern. And normally you don't have to think about it. It's a habit. But what they do then is they sit in that habit and they don't change it. And even when it doesn't serve them, they keep doing it because it's easy for them until, until that is, they're in their final moment when they're saying goodbye. And that's when the regret comes in. Because they knew they had the power all the time to make those changes if that's what they wanted to do. And yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and yeah. That, that, that's what's so scary about it. People are looking or, or do look for the easy way consistently all the time. And, and and as you said, it's having it's being able to take that brave step and, and challenging yourself and, and walk out and say, Well, yeah, I want to change yeah, this now. Definitely challenging yourself, John. And, and you know, on that note, challenging yourself. Um, tell us about what you've got coming up in October, which you know is is, is all about challenging people, isn't it? And the mindset and well, it, 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 you know yourself, mindset is everything. So, so that's yeah. what we're working on. Well, we're working on the third to the eighth of October. So it's five days in a place called Isnajar, which is right. one hour from Malaga. So you fly from in Manchester, wherever you're flying from, Liverpool, and you, you get off of Malaga, and then you've got an hour there. 
I'll talk about the places later because it is great value. It is absolutely fantastic it's a beautiful value. Beautiful place, isn't it? It's beautiful. It, it, it is a beautiful place. And, and let's face it, the, the, the weather here has been bloody miserable anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> July's just been crazy. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't really have to express that, but I, they have, the weather's been absolutely bloody awful, you know. And uh, so you're in this lovely place, and it has, because you're, you're not in the sort of real touristy area, it's sort of right. got, you, you, you're out in, in the hills with this beautiful rustic hotel, and, and it's got a ma ma um, a magnificent swimming pool in there, a place where you can sunbathe. But on, it's got all these facilities outside, all these sporting facilities. You know, if you felt that way inclined and you wanted to go, go and keep it, you, you can do that. It's it's there. And what I think is, is this. I, I will explain what it's about. But you know what the most important thing for me is this. Sometimes when we go through life and we continually do the same things, what we need sometimes is to take a little bit of time out on ourselves to work on ourselves. And, and why is that important? Job. Yeah, absolutely. Because as soon as I stop and start to work on myself and focus on something else, the problems that I'm experiencing back home in the UK or my everyday problems at work, suddenly you forget about them because you've got something else to focus on. And when yeah. you're focusing on that something else, that creates the space for the room, for the solution that you're looking at, because you're not overthinking it in your That's mind out. and trying to find you're out of that situation. Yeah, out of the environment. You're completely out of it. And it's giving you the opportunity to do something different. So what I want to do with people is, is this. We're living in a world uh, that is increasingly one way or, or another uh, in conflict. So what the whole course, the whole few days is about conflict management. But I'm not looking in from a perspective of teaching someone to be Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan. We're not coming from that perspective. I have to emphasize that. Although my background has been in those kind of those kind of areas. I'm not trying yeah. to put myself a Bruce Lee. I'm not just <laughs> or, or, or Jackie Chan. But I've been in those kind of areas. And um what it's about is this, it's understanding body and verbal language. Because you know yourself, if the most disarming thing you can do is possibly smile at a person. And, yeah. and if you smile, you'll be relaxed. I mean, sometimes I'm walking around in the city, and the sun's snarling, and you're smiling, you're all right, mate. And then you can feel, oh, oh, I, I do what I mean. They've gone down. And, and it's having the presence of mind to be able to do it. But we, right. we fall back into patterns of behavior. And what that means is this, if somebody's snarling at us, sometimes we might crouch down like this and want to be small, and you almost look like a target. Whereas yeah. Tony Robbins is saying, yeah. you stand up straight and you're proud, you know, you're, you're releasing the endorphins within your body and the dopamine, you know, you're standing strong and proud. And I'm not doing it in a challenging way, but I'm doing it in a way I looked at somebody that's confident. So our physicality, yeah. our body language becomes so important to what we're doing. And then the, the other skill I, I want to really emphasize is on the verbal language. Because when we use verbal language, if I'm having, if someone comes up to me and there's having a disagreement, and I go, but you do this, and you do that, and you do this, and that, that's challenging them. Yeah. yeah. But if I was to turn around and just do something as simple as, um, I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. can't agree with, yeah. with, it, with, with it all, but thank you. And all I've yeah. done is everything self-reflective on myself. So right. what we're doing is we're, we're creating scenarios with one another that we, you know, when you go to the gym and you practice, 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 we're going to create scenarios and situations where people will be practicing this. So they then got the Amazing. confidence to use their body language and the verbal language and then trying to control the verbal language, maybe through using simple things such as pauses in the language. So, so you, you know, you, you get that. Like if you're in the court of law, they go, your name, you're this, you're this, that, and the other, and you, blah, 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 and you start saying it, you don't even mean to say it. So you, you yeah. begin to create awareness in the way that you're responding. So you make sure you are using I, and uh, you're ensuring that you're slowing everything down, but you're still looking confident in, in your language. I mean, ultimately, we're going to take those kind of scenarios 
And then what we're then going to say is that, you know, we're going to build on the observational skills that we look in wherever you're walking in, so you're looking at a way to escape. So it becomes natural, it becomes a pattern behavior. So you walk into the bar, you know, you're looking where the exits are and things like that. So right, you know, amazing. Yeah, exactly. It just creates awareness on, on the way that you should go about it. And then we'll be looking at quick, simple, easy uh, uh, self-defense tactics from, from the point of view, you know, hit and run basically you know i'm going to do something get out fast like you know so yeah we're, 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 we're just looking at it from from that perspective you know i mean ultimately that's the last place that we want to be and and, and that's the thing that i need to emphasize because i'll still say it's the dying day that a smile does so much you know it's yeah. having fun. but you know what stops us it's the autonomic switch situation. Certainly when we feel threatened, and, and I'm, I'm sure you've been there, is that, you know, you either go to fight, flight, or freeze, don't you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and even in freeze, <laughs> you begin to hyperventilate. Mm. So the question is, how do, how do we control that? And I'll be going through what, when we step in the rain, what the monks taught us with regards to, because a lot of people don't realise this. You know, you go to a Thai box and a kickboxing gym now, mm. you just see the gym. But when I was right. training with Master Toddy in the late 70s and the 80s, what we had to do was this. that, that would, So I'd be in Manchester, we'd go train with him maybe for an hour and 15 minutes, and then he'd make you go, they, they'd have a temple inside the gym. Did you know that? Wow. Yeah. 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 But for 15 minutes, we would have to go and pray with a monk. That's, that's the way it was, That was the way it was done in the 70s. So when I look at Amazing. these gyms now, I, I don't see not You do in Thailand. Yeah. You don't, right. you don't see it here, you know. And I think there is right. something missing as a consequence to that, you know, because a lot yeah, of it, yeah. when you see the Rame, the dance that they do, a lot of it is about paying homage to the air, to the ground at the end, and right. then to the parents, and, and then to to the, the teacher crew who's taught them how, wow. how to box. So there's, a, there's a lot of ceremony that sort of goes with it, you know. Personally, I think there's, there's, there's something missing because those things aren't there. Right. But that, that was really a, a, a big, big part of it, you know. And, and I suppose that's where later in life now with the spirituality thing, it sort of makes more a more rounded blend of, of uh, the experiences I, I had. And it, it sort of puts it, a lot of it into perspective for me now. But what they taught us was how to avoid hyperventilating, you know. But so, right. yeah, wow. rain, like, you know, so such a powerful thing so we will be going through that so people don't hyperventilate and then so they learn how to control so they don't go into freeze uh we don't want them to go in into fight straight away like you know so they may be flay it may that may be the best thing you know to to, uh, to do but it's being aware it's being aware yeah. of how you're dealing with the situation. So you've got to be able to control your autonomic systems. So we're looking at them, verbal body language, and then we will be looking at uh, different scenarios and what you can do. And then we're going to practice on one of them in group activities. But we'll have the normal yeah. things such as meditation, and we'll have the, uh, you know, the be with, with the beach boxing and all that. Got to do those Amazing. things. Amazing. Right? Just, just, just to keep you moving. So that tells you about the activity. And um, I just tell you about, about the practice. It is full board. And because it's rusted, these are, we're, we're in a sort of very, isn't a jar, is a, a very old fashioned town. Right. And I, 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 I'm trying to think of it. Uh, can you, who was the Spanish dictator in, in, in the 19th? Fa Franco, was it? Franco, yeah. So Franco had one of his bases in, in isn't a jar. Right. And, and it's a very, it's got, there's a lot of history to it. But all the food is locally sourced, so none of it's processed food. Wow. It's all amazing. So it's like when you get a steak, it's a steak. Do, do, do you understand yeah. what I mean? None of these little things. The food, I'm not just saying it is it's fantastic. You know, food's brilliant and it's fully inclusive. So that's your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And amazing. for all the activities, so not including your transport from the airports or the plane flights, if you're sharing the room with another. It's only five hundred and forty pounds, and I think that's Brilliant. exceptional uh, value. That's that's yeah, that's amazing value, isn't it, John? Where where can people find out about it? Where can they where can they sign up? Or, um, how, how do they pay? Well, that that, that that that's great. Well, you can you can pay on a stage payment system. So they go to my website, which is www.painpointcoach.co.uk, painpointcoach.co.uk slash courses. And then when you go into the course section, I just had to create a payment window. You'll see 
the is now Spain. The, the, it's called the Mindful Escape, the, this retreat. So you just click on that and uh, there's a 300 pound deposit that, that you pay. And But you've got an email me and let me know if you're going to do it with somebody else. But it gives all the prices on there and uh, it recommends flights and everything to take. We'll put that under there. We'll put it the link and everything under when we post post this, John. Anyway, post the actual recording and stuff like. Because there'll be there'll be people. I know there'll be people who'll watch it um, on on that sort of catch up who can't jump on it at six o'clock. So, sounds amazing, and and I love that. You know that it's funny because people don't think that they're going to be in a situation where where they need things. So when when me and my mate Grant we were fasting, and we did a four day fast. And people were like, why, why would you do, why are you doing a four day fast? And it was like, how would you know that you're never going to have to go four days without any food? Well, you, you, you won't, we live in the Western world. How, how do you know? How, how do you know that's never going to, never going to be a thing? You know, you, you, you push yourself and you become aware of these things, hoping that it's like paying your house insurance. You hope you're never, ever going to need your house insurance. Um, but it's paid just in case you do. No, I, I think you're right. And it's great discipline. It's absolutely fantastic discipline. And when you consider what's going on with farming at the moment, I don't know, you know, I don't want to go into too much, like, but they're losing 20% of their land, aren't they? Because yeah. they have to they have to put bushes on and things like that. You know, inevitably, that's going to drive up food prices. We li we're living in very strange times. We're living in a way of Crazy that I, times. I, I, I don't particularly recognise. Absolutely crazy times, and I think um, you know I'm in uh, the the Lions Den. I'm in a group called the Lions Den, and how the the guy Sean Whalen puts it is to get your house in order, to get your house in order as much as you can. You know, be physically and mentally strong as you can. Um, be, be you know be prepared for situations that that, that may come. You, you know, who would have thought six seven years ago, like we spoke at the beginning, that there would be a homeless camp. Opposite one of the most prestigious places in, in I wouldn't say even in the country, in the world, like I, 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 Park I'm, Lane. I'm, yeah, gobsmacked over that. I, I, I really am. Do you know when I, I when in the eighties you just didn't see that. So maybe maybe it started a little bit in the nineties and maybe towards the end of the nineties, but in the eighties and the seventies you just didn't didn't see it at all. Not what you see the homelessness that you see now. We're meant to live in this caning society. There's something definitely wrong. In, in, in it all but you know what, what you mentioned is a great and i think on another occasion i would like to have a talk to you about that because um i i think pooling together it may become very very important and um uh, having fallback scenario so yeah maybe i will i'd like to talk yeah. to you about that at some point yeah definitely john yeah we'll catch up without a doubt i think it, i think it's you know it's essential and i think having the right people Around you, essentially, you know that's that's why I started the seat at the table. You get a group of guys around you who who you can rely on. A couple, you know, whether it's helping you in business, whether it's helping you with your fitness, whether it's helping with you your mental attitude, just helping you in, in some way, shape, or form. And I think just people just listening to these conversations in in the cell, um, you know, help people to to sort of be more mindful of what they're doing and or what they're not doing and and, and tuning into it a bit. Um, yeah, you know, you hit the nail on head. We're living in really, really strange times. Um, mm -hmm. Some good, but, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, it's quite dark of what's going on as well. Exceptionally, exceptionally. Um, shall we see if any guys have got any questions? Has anybody, uh, guys, we really appreciate you all jumping on. Uh, has anyone got any questions for John? No, not at the moment. <laughs> but that, nice to meet you anyway, Darren. Yeah, you too, man. Appreciate you jumping on. It's good, obviously, seeing Steve, Stephen and John again. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's good seeing you guys. Went on the retreat. <laughs> I, and thanks for being here, Alice, Christian, and, and Michael and Stephen. Ah, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking your time out. Thank oh, you, Paul, John. You anyway. Sorry, Christian, what did you say, mate? I, I thought I'd um, introduce Alex, because uh, he's one of my mates. I managed to uh, get him to come on it. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Guys, uh, really appreciate you joining. John, where where can people follow you, mate? Where can they, they get in touch with you? 
Pain Point Coach on uh, Facebook, www.painpointcoach.co.uk uh, website. I'm on Instagram at Pain Point Coach. And, um, and I think Mr. Flow, because the Flow book uh, on, on LinkedIn. Amazing stuff. Uh, guys, I'm Darren J. Brooks on all platforms. And um, I run a men's network seat at the table. There's a free Facebook group if you want to jump in. People post in there regularly. This is where this conversation will be posted from, from my end. I know John John will post it in his areas. Um, well, Michael's just jumped back in. But yeah, jump in the group. That I hold events at the minute around the Staffordshire area, but I'm expanding nationwide at, at some point. And then at uh, eventually internationally so it's a good it's a group of guys getting together there's usually a speaker on nice. john spoke there Damn, himself and, and um, yeah sharing sharing something that can help so uh amazing stuff sorry, uh, was, guys sorry thank I was, you for joining I was, but i was on mute by them sorry about that i was i was speaking but i was on mute but yeah i'm looking forward to going on this uh on this thing in, in october i'm looking forward to it and, uh, thanks christine for Obviously, talking to me about oh, it. Well, I, Alex, I'm looking forward to meeting you for the first time as well because we really <laughs> talk, talked on the, the phone or whatever. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. And, and you know, and we're going to have a really good time. I mean, yeah. you're going to make lifelong friends, and I think that that's important as well. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. Nice. Christian's been on it, so he knows. You know, yeah, of course, he told he's told me about it anyway. So, it's quite a uh, quite a mad experience for the first time ever. I mean, that was my first holiday away. Honestly, it was. <laughs> well, it, it was. It was nice to know that we were there when you broke your cherry, Christian. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. I have to just do it, mate. I just, you've got to be open, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> you're not I, 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 absolutely, mate. I, and I, and you were, you know, and I think you were all the better for it as well, you know. And and people took to you so much more, you know, because uh, yeah. they realised you were authentic, you were genuine. Yeah, that's what I like to be, just truthful, really. Like, because if you're going to lie about something, it's just pointless. You're not going to get anywhere. 100%. I think you, you just hit the nail on the head there, Christian. You've got, you got to be open. You've got to be open to new information. You've got to be open to new ways uh, of being more effective. And if you, you, you know, you're open to these things, you just, you, you progress and you grow. Um, when, when people are closed off to things, uh, mm. quite sad, really. Exactly, yeah. Amazing stuff. We'll uh, we'll call it a night, gents. Take yeah, Dan, care. John, really enjoyed that as always, mate. Yeah, Dan, and I love spending time with you. I've got to say that, like you know, and Amazing I want to come back to you on that other point. You know, um, you're a great guy. I think what you do is absolutely fantastic. I support you one hundred percent in any way that I can, and thank you for giving up your time to talk about this. It really is appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. More thank to you. the point. Thank you. No problem. Thank you guys. Take care. Appreciate that, Thanks, John. Take care. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>